Hello and welcome back to this Damphila Idealistic Crusade. This will be a, a book review of, of a reprinting series and also just a little bit of discussion about the importance and how amazing it is to go back and read the original Zorro stories by Johnston McCulley. So, of course, uh, Zorro was created by McCulley, who was an accomplished writer in pulp magazines, and he first appeared in the 1919 story Curse of Capistrano, which is actually seen here in my original uh, paperback copy. It was uh, retitled The Mark of Zorro when uh, Douglas Fairbanks made the iconic masterpiece film the next year in 1920, and he made one or two uh, you know, changes that uh, kind of got accepted as the uh, the common image of Zorro. And again, the film was so successful that the uh, story was republished in book form everywhere as The Mark of Zorro. And this is now in the public domain, so you can actually go and read it uh, pretty much anywhere online. And if you've never read this before, you really need to. I mean, it is still magical. You can It, it flies by. You can't put it down. And, uh, of course, uh, it is the basis of the film version and the 1940 sound remake made at Fox with Tyrone Power, which is also a masterpiece. And... Um, but it's it's underrated. Zorro's place in history is it's known to some fans. It's known to a lot of people as, as being one of the early early you know superhero figures, if you will. But it, it really, in almost every way, you know, there are precursors. You have the Scarlet Pimpernel. You have influences on Macaulay before 1919. But in so many different ways, all the things we think of as the traditional superhero figure or the comic book hero character uh, is just already here and crystallized in the Zorro stories. So you have the, 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 the masked vigilante with the dual identity and only certain people know of his existence. Uh, you know, you have the secret cave area. You have all these fantastic exploits to right wrongs and and uh, of course, Zorro is is fighting to protect the people of old California. But it, it's it's really like in so many different ways the birth of the the superhero type character. And these stories are written so vividly and with such energy and with such uh, pacing that even though um, they start to definitely get a bit repetitive if you read all of the short stories uh, in particular, you know, in, in one gap, um, that doesn't even matter because they're so much fun. They're so vivid. And um, I never thought I would get the chance to read all of the stories. So I've read Mark of Zorro or Curse of Capistrano many times. And again, it's published everywhere because it's in the public domain. This is a really nice edition from uh, Forge, which was done with some original novels they commissioned. These were all printed after they made uh, well, for for the uh, 1998 Mask of Zorro film, which was the first Zorro film in ages, really, you know, sparking some new interest in the character. So they reprinted this around the time of the Mask of Zorro coming out in 1998. And in doing that, they also commissioned a series of three novels that were published uh, in the next three years. So I have one of them here with a, a similar cover design. This is Zorro and the Dragon Raiders. These were all done by various writers. I have two of the three, uh, but they've never been reprinted. And, and they're, they're interesting, but not exactly essential. Um, but anyway, so this was the version I always read. And so there are several Zorro novels that were written over time. And then there are a number of short stories and longer short stories that were written for various pulp magazines. Uh, Macaulay wrote all kinds of stories, uh, not just Zorro. He created many different characters. And um, with the wonderful qualities of the, of the Zorro stories, I really want to read a, a lot of the other stories that he wrote. But unfortunately, uh, for most of these, you have to resort to collecting various pulp magazines. There's not like a great uh, collection of Macaulay stories. There are various tales reprinted, um, but the Zorro stories in particular had never seen a, uh, a complete reprinting job or even uh, the various novels. Uh, certain, most of these stories had never, ever been reprinted. However, I finally uh, 
came across a few in a reprinting series that I found two volumes of. So uh, about a year or two ago, I stumbled across these, which I had heard of, but never thought I would find. So these were the first real attempt at doing a reprinting of the Zorro canon by Macaulay. So these were uh, called the Master's Edition. So this is volume one. This is reprinting uh, a lot of the various Zorro tales uh, that were done in Argosy and West Magazine. And Macaulay wrote Zorro on and off uh, from 1919 until uh, the late 1950s, just before he died. So he was still writing them uh, when the Disney series premiered. And so there's some great uh, publicity stills of him on the Zorro set and, and uh, showing things to Guy Williams in the Zorro costume. But um, he didn't write Zorro, you know, consecutively. There's, there are long gaps. And so um, there's a little bit of a gap between the first Zorro novel and the second Zorro novel. And then uh, it, it sort of goes over time. And then by the time he started doing them for West Magazine in the 40s and 50s, that's where the big bulk of the later short stories come from. So this is a really handsome edition uh, done like a full, uh, you know, a graphic novel. But what's great is you get these wonderful full page, uh, you know, artist renderings and drawings, and then you get a nice two column uh, font style, which is very reminiscent of how a pulp magazine would have been reprint, would have been printed originally. So this is a really wonderful edition if you ever find a copy. But again, they were quite rare, and uh, the idea was to do a number of volumes. So they did manage to do a second volume. These are stories from 1944 through 1946, again, in the same style. This is a really beautiful print job. I really like the layout of these. I believe there is a third volume they did, and then there's an announcement for more, but then they never got to. So uh, there are just three in this series that were done around 2000, 2001. And that was pretty much it for, for a long while. And I thought that uh, it was simply just going to be these and that nobody had ever tried to tackle the Zorro stories again. But then, of course, like most things, you find out you know, about you know long after they've already started. So the internet is a wonderful place. And I came across a mention of the Bold Venture label having just completed a entire reprinting of the Johnston McCulley Zorro canon. So, of course, I looked this up immediately and was so thrilled and excited that uh, this had taken place. And so I got the first volume and... And here it is. This is volume one of Bold Venture's reprinting of the classic Zorro stories. All of these have beautiful covers and are printed in these really wonderful paperback editions that have matching spines and rear covers. And they're actually really nicely done. I love the size of these. They fit in the hand. They're portable, but yet um, there's still tons of stories in each volume. It's split into six volumes. So each run, each one runs about. Uh, let's see, it's it's about 290 to 320 pages per volume. So it is jam packed with Zorro. But uh, what's great is each one has an introductory article about various aspects of Zorro's history throughout the years and the Bacully tales. And then uh, each volume has selected novels and then uh, short stories. Now, the quirk of this uh, is that they take a novel and start each volume with a novel and then uh, do a batch of the stories in chronological order. So if you want to stick to exact chronological reading order, you kind of have to jump around a little bit between all the various volumes. Um, it's, it's pretty much chronological, but if, you, if you're like me and you want to see exactly how the uh, character grew over the various stories, you'll have to um, start, you'll have to read volume one, and then like between the six volumes, you have to do a little bit of jumping back and forth on like certain of the various novels because they didn't keep it exactly 100% chronological. So you, you would then jump from like a story from 1944 in one of the novel, uh, one of the stories. And then the novel that's in the same volume was actually from like 1946. So to keep chronological, you have to switch to another volume. That's, that's a minor thing. I can understand um, the sort of uh, layout of these. I guess the idea was to give a really good uh, full-length Zorro novel story uh, or novella story. 
and then have uh, the next chronological section of the short story. So it, it makes sense. And, it, you know, once, once you realize that, you can see what they're going for. So I don't mind that as much. But, of course, if you do want to read these in full chronological order, you'll have to get all the volumes. Now, the only other issue that I, I want to mention, because it is something I noticed, and uh, some of the Amazon reviewers have noticed this as well, so it is something that it's not just me. There are, unfortunately, a few typos in select volumes on certain stories. So, uh, for example, in Volume 2, in the novel, which is the second Zorro story, there's a number of distracting typos. But, again, it, it, it does happen, but I wish it had been caught before printing. Um, there are, uh, if you go to the Bold Venture website, you can actually order hardcover versions, which they've come out with. So I don't know if maybe it's been corrected for those, um, but that's the only really unfortunate problem with these is that there are some typos. But thankfully, it's pretty much uh, in only volume two, and it's actually just in that story. The short stories are unaffected. And then I noticed some um, in volume five, and I think a couple in volume six as well. So it's not every volume, it's not every story, but it is something that I did notice in reading all the volumes is that there are, unfortunately, some distracting typos here and there. Um, but again, you know, this is not done by a major publisher with, uh, you know, tons of, of people working for them. It is a smaller publisher. A Bold Venture seems to pretty much specialize in doing uh, pulp reprints and uh, adventure stories and materials that are really being lost to time because the just the texts aren't out there. So um, with the Zorro stories, it's amazing to think these stories have never been fully reprinted before. So this this series really marks. Uh, the first time that a real cornerstone of not just American literature, but literature in general, because this this is really the birth of the superhero character in fiction, uh, you know, in, in the context we think of. Again, there are historical uh, figures that predate Zorro, but Zorro is where, where everything really crystallizes, and you get to see the character grow over time. Now, if you read all these, the continuity is it's there but it also ebbs and flows so uh you, you see some of the same story ideas get repeated and reworked in various uh short stories over the years because of course it was never intended for people to read all of these start to finish so sometimes macaulay would play around with ideas or characters that he'd done before and of course if you know mark of zorro uh, the novel or the film or the sound version of the film you know how it ends with Zorro being unmasked. So then it's like, how does Zorro continue? Well, Zorro just merely shows up in the next story and, you know, just uh, they, they do the second story. And then after that and all the various other stories, that gets glossed over. And uh, the, the, there's sort of a little retconning there. And then eventually in, in another story, Zorro gets unmasked again. And then it's a great reveal and a great story. But then it's like, where do you go from there? And again, there's a, there, so there's like a continual sort of retconning with the continuity in various places if you read all the stories start to finish which it's always cool to see how things like that happened over time but of course these were just you know read one at a time in various magazines and, and pulp magazines so again it was never intended that you would be able to sit down and read all of them in a collected volume so there is that to consider and that you know most of the stories are a bit episodic and they are mostly short stories but it's also great to see the novellas and the novels collected as well because you get the full width and breadth of the Zorro character and how he, how these stories work in both long and short form. So just to show you the, each of the volumes, this is volume one. And each of these has, again, great introduction articles and nice articles to conclude each volume. But then they also have some really nice illustrations. So um, some of them are, of course, various commissioned art pieces and stuff. Let's see, but some of them do have the original illustrations as well. So here's a scene from volume two. Here's the beautiful cover for volume two. The matching rear. Here is volume three. I'm gonna get that glare off. Let's 
so you can see what the original illustration looks like. Here is volume four. Here's the beautiful volume five. And volume six. It's really interesting reading the stories because uh, it's definitely the Zoro you know, but it's also very interestingly quite a bit bloodier in places. Of course, uh, he doesn't just leave the mark of Zoro in inanimate objects or clothing. Uh, he will literally carve his mark on people's flesh or particularly on their foreheads. So they are thus forever marked uh, by Zoro's blade as being, you know, terrible people. So um, that's just a wonderful idea. Very, very dark, a little on the grisly side, but, uh, and, and the various things that befall the, the, the poor residents of Los, of Los Angeles, uh, you know, they're definitely a, a bit grislier, uh, you know, people get whipped and when there are sword fights, you know, they will get, actually get run through or stabbed or shot. Um, you know, there, there are a number of deaths and things, so they are full on pulp adventure stories. But um, so there, it's, it's a little bit bloodier, a little bit darker than what you're used to with the traditional, um, you know, film adaptations or the Disney series or the traditional idea of Zorro. But everything else is, is there. And also, you know, it, it changes, it grows over time. So, you know, Zorro's identity is completely a secret in most of them. And then some stories, you know, his, his father is in on it, but then others that he's, he's not. Um, then you have the uh the helper uh assistant figure of bernardo who is uh deaf and mute but then eventually becomes much more like what we see in the disney series um so there, there's a nice bit of ebb and flow and of course once the fairbanks film came out that uh the changes it made influenced the stories to come so it's really cool to see the growth of the characters over time but um, these are just incredibly wonderful, and I read them nonstop. I read all six volumes <laughs> nonstop, so um, I cannot recommend these highly enough. Again, I'm trying to hold them so you can see the really cool matching spines, and it's hard to do just you know physically holding them in your hand. But they're also numbered at the bottom, um, and they're actually quite affordable for the content you get here because each one is literally priced at nineteen ninety five. Um, you can get them on Amazon, but it's also cool to order straight from the publisher themselves. Um, but for the amount of stories and material you get here, each volume is about three hundred some odd pages with introduction and closing, and uh, you know it's it's definitely affordable. You just get them one at a time, at, like I did, and um, they're just fantastic. This is a piece of American literature that just should be treasured. Um, its importance cannot be overstated. Um, and they're just wonderful. They're wonderful. Uh, they're, I think the, the adaptation that gets the closest to the spirit of the Zora stories is the uh, Disney 1950s series, which, of course, it, you know, was one of the things that blew my childhood mind seeing it when it was uh, run on the Disney Channel late at night. Um, and I've loved the character ever since. But it's the stories themselves have a richness that um, is, is really at the heart of adventure storytelling. And I would recommend these to anyone. Um, you, you will be able to read these every year for the rest of your life and treasure them. Uh, so uh, my hat's off to Bold Venture for doing this. Um, uh, this is my, my first uh, purchase from them at all. I've, I've not been really aware of them before, but I'm just now getting into uh, reading classic pulp stories. So um, these Zorro reprints, I cannot recommend highly enough. These belong in every library uh, with a section for uh, really great adventure storytelling. These are really a slice of American literary history. And without the Zorro stories, there would be no superheroes. They just wouldn't. Um, the, the, you know, um, in, in the, the sort of 
primordial soup that birthed the uh, comic superhero landscape that we have today. You have the at the start of it all the classic pulp characters. Uh, you know, primarily the the shadow being the most important and most impacting of those along with you know doc savage and the phantom um but even even before them really the the character that got the ball rolling is of course the masked avenger the fox himself the scourge of old california zorro so this is the bold venture six volume reprint of johnson mcculley's immortal zorro tales so please do yourself a favor check these out and if you just want to start with something, read the original Curse of Capistrano, which you can read for free because it is in the public domain. But I'm telling you, that will whet your appetite, and you will very quickly want to read the rest of the stories, which the only way to read these are in this Bold Venture reprint because this is the first time all the stories have finally been reprinted because before this, you were stuck trying to get old uh, Western magazine issues from the 40s and 50s, which, trust me, is not an easy thing to do. So... Um, just absolutely essential that's why i wanted to do this little video and talk about these because these are just magic they are absolutely magic so uh, thank you so much for watching and do yourself a favor and go on a midnight ride with the fox <laughs>